Hi everyone, it's Andy from Finlingo and today we're going to be looking at calculating the degree of financial leverage. So let's get to it first of all and I'll explain what it is. So I need to go down to reading 34 in 2021. Get there as fast as I can. I'm using a Google phone today. Our Android version of the app. It is on the Apple as well and you can download it from the Apple App Store. So let's go down then to calculate the degree of financial leverage which is there. Um, and let's bring up the help and then we'll try and explain what this is. Now, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, there's the top way, which is DFL, QPVF. Who can remember that in the middle of an exam? And there's a much easier way, which is the second equation, which you can use 99% of the time. Now, for that 1% of the cases where you can't because they don't give you something, um, do download our app and try this question yourself and practice it again and again. Until, uh, until that's burned in, but pretty much you're going to get to be able to use this much, much simpler equation in 99% of cases. So this is EBIT divided by EBIT minus C. So what's C? C is the fixed financial cost or the interest that you're paying on your debt. Now notice if you had no debt, you've got a factory, let's say you've bought it with cash and you've got no debt and you're not paying any interest on no debt, well, then it would be EBIT divided by EBIT take away zero, which would then make DFL, degree of financial leverage, equal to one. So one is a baseline. And as you borrow more and more, and you pay more and more interest, then this number is going to go up and up and up and up and up as C gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's telling you that you are quite leveraged in, the, in, finan in a financial sense. So that's what the calculation gives you. The base is one, and then it gets higher and higher and higher, the more indebted you are, basically, or the more interest you have to pay. So let's try the question then. So um, we're looking for EBIT, which is the fourth number there. So let me just put that down. I'll go to my calculator, which is on my Apple phone, actually. There's my, there's my calculator there. So we're going to go EBIT, which is uh, 2327440. We'll store that in memory very quickly. Store one. And then that's divided by brackets, recall one, which is the EBIT again, take away C, which is the interest charge, which is 200, 160 brackets. And that gives us 1.094, which I think has to be A, doesn't it? Yeah, so super, that's correct. It's two ways of doing it, explained to you there, which is very, very nice. I'll just do that very, very quickly. Let's see how fast I can do this. Okay, so we're going to go for operating income, which is three, nine. I might make a mistake, but forgive me if I do, because I'm going as fast as I can right near the end of the exam. Store one, and then divide that by brackets, and recall one, take away. Oh, it just goes, my head's going to explode, six, eight, two. They're coming round and saying, oh, just made a mistake. Can you put down your pens, please? And I just did it, and I've just got to press three, one, seven. Yes, I've passed the CFA. Here's my paper, please, examiner. So that's how fast you can do it using that equation. Um, good luck with that next uh, in the exam, if it comes up. I'll let you do that one for homework. Now, if you did find this video useful, um, please do go to our YouTube channel and like and subscribe at this, and that lets us know to keep making more of this content to help you in the future with other uh, problems and other situations on the CFA curriculum. Anyhow, see you next time.